Let's just start fresh. Fresh. This is fresh. How's it going everybody? My name is Alex and welcome to today's video. The topic I have for you guys today is acoustic treatment. Now I know there are a lot of videos that go into detail about this topic and to be honest when I first started getting into the acoustic treatment side of things I think there is a little too much detail in a lot of these videos for people who don't have all of the tools that are provided in these videos. So what I'm going to show you is my methods of doing things especially on a budget, limited resources and equipment, and stuff that can be more for a temporary setup but is not limited to a more permanent solution. And before we go into detail about actually building the panels, we have to know what we're talking about. What is an acoustic panel? Now I'm sure you guys have come across these rectangular panels of cloth hanging on the walls of professional studios. That my friend is acoustic treatment. And it isn't limited to just hanging on the walls. You can put them on the ceiling, in the corners, sometimes even hang them on doors and windows. This type of acoustic treatment tends to be the most popular. It is easy to make and the materials are relatively easy to find. I mean, it's literally just three different items, cloth, wood, and insulation. I mean, aside from actual screws and staples, that's all it is. Now, depending on what kind of studio you are putting together will also determine the strategy in which these panels are placed in the room. In my case, and more often than not, other people that are renting a room don't have a very permanent solution to where they can hang these acoustic panels adequately without breaking the lease agreement or stepping on the toes of your landlord. Now I'm lucky enough to where I don't have as strict of a landlord and I could hang these on the walls, but I really didn't want to make that more of a hassle if I ended up moving out later on to not only uninstall, but potentially pay for damages that I don't want to be responsible for. I highly recommend for you to stick around to the end of the video where I explain how I keep my acoustic panels floating above my walls rather than making a permanent mounting. Now that we understand why we're building these panels, Let's talk about the materials that I use for my build. I didn't go with the cheapest solution because in previous experiences, cheap isn't always the best option. But I also didn't want to go into the more expensive side of things because these panels are just going to be standing in one place anyways, and I don't intend on making this a permanent solution. So whatever is most durable to use with a nail gun or screws, whatever your method is for putting the wood together, it doesn't have to be super specific. So for this specific build, my base traps are going to be roughly eight foot tall and roughly two foot wide. Just enough for me to put them in the corners and be out of the way of the door that I have for my closet and will be easier to move around anyways. Each of these boards will be one inch thick and then inside the wooden frame, I will be putting Rockwell safe and sound insulation. Now I know a lot of people give a lot of hate with the safe and sound insulation, but I see a lot more good than I do hate for a lot of these cheaper and smaller home studios. And I kind of need acoustic treatment to learn how to mix and master. So that's what I went with. And I know some people are more concerned about the health risks. And that's another thing that I would like to debunk is that for the thickness of the cloth you are using, you are not going to be opposed to any major health risks, let alone minor health risks. Now I would try to keep clear of whatever AC vents be right next to your acoustic panels in that case. Now the fabric was a little different in my case. I was being very particular on what kind of fabric I wanted to use on the front of the panels, not only for looks, but also for durability and other quality reassurance. So I want to give a big thank you to Big Duck Fabric for really helping me out getting samples and trying out various types of fabric to use in my studio. I'll be sure to leave a link down in the description for them. And on top of Big Duck Fabric, I will leave a link for everything that I have used in this video to build my acoustic panels. Now I know some of you might have a question in your head thinking, well Alex, I don't have a garage full of tools. How am I gonna build these things? If you don't already have tools, go get you some. But they don't have to be the most durable and the most expensive tools out there. I've been using Walmart brand Heart Tools for a good while, just for cheaper DIY projects like this because frankly I don't do enough carpentry work to really need expensive tools so for whenever I do need it I have something that does the job fine now for these base traps it cost me a little over $400 but for a base trap this big and this tall it probably would have cost me double if not triple that 
and you don't have to follow the same dimensions that I have used for my treatment. As long as your insulation can be placed in the frame without issue, this can apply to whatever size you'd like. The first step after making all of your cuts and figuring out your dimensions to make sure that they not only fit in your room, but also that you have a big enough space to be able to put this together, is to actually start assembling it without screws. I like to lay out my duct fabric first and then start assembling the panel itself. And by doing this, I don't have to waste time on making perfect clean cut measurements. If you want to make these panels as perfect as possible, by all means, measure away. But for time's sake, I like to just lay out all the wood pieces where I need them and then put the insulation between the wood pieces accordingly. So whenever I go to screw the pieces together, I know it'll work even if my measurements weren't entirely 100%. And once you get the frame together and the insulation where you want it in the frame, it's time to lay down the garden fabric. And the reason why I did garden fabric on the back instead of the duck fabric is because of cost. It was just cheaper to do that. It's not quite as pretty as the duck fabric, but it will hold the insulation in without a problem. And I just want to reiterate that these acoustic panels are not for everyone. I do these because I'm not looking for a permanent solution in a rental. If I were in my own studio or my own house that I've bought myself, I'd probably make these panels a little nicer. But for now, they get the job done. Now once you get the garden fabric stapled down to the frame and making sure that all the insulation is covered and will not have any issues falling out, it's time to take the duct fabric and pull it tight around the frame and staple it on top of the garden fabric. Once you get that finished, you're all good to go. You have built your acoustic panel. Now the space I had to use was a little dirty for the assembly. I recommend cleaning up beforehand before making these acoustic panels, but I wanted to be able to get these acoustic panels in before I set up any more speakers. And I really want to get this studio done as soon as I can. And I know in every video I talk about, I am trying to get this Dolby Atmos studio put together. It's coming. Eventually. Early in the video, I mentioned that I made these panels so big, and, and I understand that people are asking why I made them so big. In my old studio, I just had them leaning up against the wall at an angle to where it would just lean across the wall, and it done me really good. Now in this new Atmos studio, I needed a little more room on my left and right surrounds, so angling them up against the wall wasn't quite an option. So my quick-witted idea was to go to Lowe's and get a couple screw-in hooks and some basic twine. What I did was take the hook, once I screwed in the hook against the wall, I took the twine, made a knot, and pulled it across the front, around the back, and back up to the other side to the other hook I had, and tied a knot there as well. Because where there's no support on the bottom, it can't stay upright by itself, so having the support at the top will keep it upright and hold it up against the wall. And that's really it. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end of the video. If you'd like to see more content like this, Click here, you know where to go. It's right here, I think. Right here? Yeah, 